Hello there again everybody, Boyd here with you, and welcome to part 3 of our 11400 Enterprise E-Build. I'm uh, working on right now getting the control board set up and ready to be installed into the saucer. Uh, we've got this little board from HLI, and we've got to solder a couple of basic wires on here to get our connections for our strobe light, nav lights, and our power coming in. So what I'm using here is these are wires that were um, on the uh, LEDs that come with this if you order the actual kit. I'm not going to be actually using those LEDs, so I just clipped a couple of these wires off. They're a nice gauge. And on the one end here, we've got them already pre-tinned, which is nice. So we'll just be able to drop them right into the holes here and get them soldered up. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Important thing I always want to mention, you guys, is that you have a good solder iron if you're going to attempt any of this electronics work. Um, the, typically, the off-the-shelf, um, you know, the Weller types and stuff like that, the single ones you can buy... Um, at a lot of you know dollar stores and stuff like that they're good for most practical purposes but if you're going to be doing much of this work you want to get yourself a really good solder iron the reason I bring this up is that um, uh, some people think that uh, you know too much heat can hurt these uh, control boards and they can if you have a uh, solder iron that actually doesn't get hot enough I'm running this one at um, looks like 850 degrees it's max and um, this is a Weller soldering station and I've had this for a long time I've only had to replace the tip on it a couple of times so it's worth it to invest in a good solder iron if you're gonna do much of this because it's important we're gonna actually get hot enough so we can just touch the solder on there really briefly and get it away where a solder iron that's not quite hot enough you're gonna have to lay it on there for a long time to let the solder melt and that heat's just gonna get you know soak into this board and you really don't want it to do that so it's actually better to have a really hot solder iron. So I just thought I'd mention that. Um, we're going to start off here and go on the left-hand side. We've got this uh, power coming in. So we're going to use a red wire. It's all the way to the left. And I'm just going to reach in here with my solder and just give this a quick little... Hopefully if this goes according to plan, I'll get a little bit more solder pulled out there. And we're just going to hit it real quick. Just that little bubble that dropped over on the top of it should be plenty good. I'll give it a second and just wait, and then uh, we'll give it a the usual pull test. It's on there real good. Okay, so we'll go to the black one now. And since this wire already had a little bit of solder on the uh, end of it there, that solder also melted too, so we, we bonded all the way through the wire. That's exactly what we want. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just a quick little touch like that. And you always want to make sure that the solder hasn't um, pooled in some way and leaked over and got on the other connection. You want to make sure there's a space in between those and we're looking good here. So now we'll rotate it over. And let's see, we're, we're going to use our nab and strobe lights connection so it doesn't really matter on this one. We'll just keep track of what they are. We'll do the inside one first here. Just a little drop got down on there. That's all we need. Okay, we'll go for the last one here. So you can see how, uh, how actually really easy these boards are to set up. Just be really careful. Got a little too much solder on that corner there, but that's okay. We'll let that soak in a little bit. I'll try to come over here and get it. Just take your time. There we go. Got a nice little drop on there. Give it just a second here. Then we'll give it a pull. And we are all set, you guys. So all I have to do now is strip the ends of these wires and then make up my connections to uh, our SMDs that we installed in the last episode into the saucer. So we'll cut the camera now real quick, get your reset up here, we'll bring the saucer in and we'll get this put in. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we're back to show you a little bit more everybody. Uh, I've been working on the uh, getting the 
uh, control board mounted in the upper saucer. You can see where I put it here. I picked out this little spot right in the back. There's no light groups around this or no window groups around this little area, and it's out of the way. It's nice that the board is nice and small like that, especially on a smaller kit like this where you've got plenty of room to work with. And um, we've got that all in there. I just used some regular uh, hot glue to glue that down in place so it's not going anywhere. Um, I've ran off all my circuits. I've got my uh, navigation connected to my three nav spots, the green, the red, and the white one up at the front of the bow that we talked about. And then we've got a strobe light at the top of the bridge, just behind the bridge there, um, that's connected to that circuit. Now, everything's pretty much ready to go. It works really well. I'll go ahead and power it up for you. You can kind of see, I've got to touch up my black here where you can see what I was talking about where that light will continue. That's just one coat of black that I dabbed on there. I'll touch that up. But uh, I tested this out and none of the lights leaking or interfering with each other and everything. The green's not showing up in the windows or anything up on the top or the red. And this white one up here in the front's working really good. I had to move this one, this one here that I had glued down with that little black spot over it. I had to move it because uh, it was actually blocking a couple little windows right there and they look dark. And you can actually see the um, flashing of the, um, the SMD over the top of that. So we got rid of that. Um, as I said, you know, I'd like to be able to do this a different way where I could have just put an SMD like directly on there and not use fiber optics, but, uh, it's not going to work doing it this way, guys, because the light, uh, just, it, it soaks into the actual plastic doing this way. You're not blocking it from the inside. So you're, you're soaking it into the plastic. And so the window groups around that will light up in green. You'll be able to see it. So that's pretty much the only way you're going to be able to do it is with fiber optics. Um, so unless you like really carefully painted around there and then scraped away just a little bit where the uh, uh, where the lights or the windows are actually are on the top side, maybe that would work. But uh, this is a you know effective way and it works really good. I'll turn this over for you and show you. Um, you can see we've got the little pinpoint of red here blinking. We've got our strobe there. We've got the green over on this side. If you guys can see that, hopefully, and the white up front. And um, I did this really small on purpose because uh, this is a 1400 scale model and this ship is supposed to be huge you guys and you don't want these huge honking you know LEDs sticking up on the top side of this or big big you know points of light it these should barely show up at this scale because um, this thing's you know scaled down really far you can see I've got my uh, lenses in here for my impulse engines I sanded down the ridges on these because we're going to be using the uh, photo etch parts to cover those up, which is going to look really nice. And I painted in the little detail there. Um, I'll show you something that I did on that that works really well. I've showed you this before, but let me get these wires out of the way here. Um, what I did is I painted both sides, the, the, the front and the back of the lenses with Tamiya transparent red first. And then I came back with some white and sprayed behind that for my light blocking. Um, to diffuse these. It works a lot better than using paper or, you know, cotton or whatever you want to use. All you have to do is put a couple of coats on there. I'll put like one coat at a time with my airbrush and just keep looking at it because I've got these uh, LEDs right here that are going to be right up against that, right? I was thinking of just using um, the ambient light in here to uh, allow that to light up, but I thought that they should be a little bit brighter and look a little bit more um, specific. So I wanted the LEDs to to be pretty close to that and uh, it took about two or three coats and then I got it diffused exactly where it wants and you don't see any hot spots whatsoever even though the LEDs are like right up against that I'm going to use that same method when I do the chiller grills um, but it works really good now here I use some warm white SMDs because as I've talked about before when you use this to me a transparent color I found that if you uh, use the regular white LEDs it washes a lot of the color out of those it makes them look not quite as rich you'll lose a little bit of the flavor of the color where the warm makes a, you know the color stay nice and rich like it should so um, and I tested it out and you can't see any of the mix uh, the, the other white LEDs are so bright in here that you're not going to see like the yellow around the little window groups right here it looks really good so you don't have to build any light boxes or anything like that you know blocking everything in or separating it so that's going to work really good now I've got the um, circuits all ready to go here we've got our you know Navigation all set up here in our strobe. We've got the navigation lights only that are on the bottom of the saucer So I've just got to run a jumper wire from here up to here when I get ready to close it Connect that to the uh, to the nav circuit and then uh, our power will come in right here So that these lights will light up we will branch off of that power and it'll go out through this little hole right here 
down into the secondary hole where it's all going to tie together. I'll have power going up to the nacelles and power out the bottom to the base where we're going to have a switch mounted to turn it off and on. So really simple, but you'll see all that when we get to that point. Um, everything's looking really good here. This is pretty much just about ready to, uh, to close it up. So these little black spots that you see here were my attempt to black out some of the windows. This is something I wanted to point out to you guys. Because we're using this method to uh, light the entire plastic like this, it doesn't really work because the light just bypasses it. The, the plastic is actually soaking up all the light, so it had very little effect. So if I want to black out some of the windows, I'm going to have to actually go on the outside and hand paint some of the little window groups if I decide to do that. I'll see how much trouble it is. If it's too much trouble, I'm just going to not worry about it and just leave all the lights on. But um, So yeah, this is pretty much ready to seal up. We've got this little area back here lit up. Uh, a little strip of LED tape right here. Um, this all gets sealed up when you put the uh, uh, saucer onto the secondary hull and I tested it everything it closes up really good. So um, let me move this out of the way now and um, we'll go ahead and um, show you the uh, secondary hull and what I've had to do here. Now um, this took quite a bit of work you guys. What I wound up coming up with, this was a little bit of trial and error. Um, I originally had one strip of LED tape uh, glued all the way across the top with, you know, with the LEDs facing straight down, uh, which I thought would, uh, you know, pretty much light up this entire thing. Well, the problem was this doesn't have a lot of area where you can mount anything in here without actually covering up some of the window groups. You know, this whole, I was pretty much good in this area right here, but this whole strip right here above the pylon was going to be dark. When I tested it, it didn't light up. So what I wound up doing is I took the LED strip back out and I flipped it over. So now I've got the LEDs facing, you can see I basically glued them in upside down, facing the plastic. And I had to put one more strip here uh, to get the bottom group of windows. But now the entire thing, uh, all the window groups light up really nice. I did a couple little test um, scratch-offs here to find out. And then the cool thing was, is back here at the... Um, shuttle bay around the edge of the fan tail there there's a really small little group of windows that you see uh, most of the builds that you'll see those windows are never lit because they're just really hard to get to I wound up getting those lit as well um, what I had to do there is I took my Dremel tool with a really fine tip knurling bit on it and I went in here and channeled this all out because this is a solid hunk of plastic right here I went over in a couple spots and kind of gouged up the edge a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Once I glue this all together and seal it all up, we'll putty over that and clean that all up real nice and you'll never know. Uh, then we've got the shuttle bay doors that actually go over the top of that too. But don't worry about that. We'll get that all cleaned up. Um, the uh, So now I've got the, uh, uh, the entire thing. The windows will light up really nice, and I did that on both sides. So it's all ready to go there. Now the pylons, as you guys probably know, that built this kit. But those of you who don't, you have to you have to channel these out. So uh, I, again, using that that fine knurling tip, I just made a straight line all the way across, and I nipped off a little bit of the uh, the tab that actually mounts it in there, and then uh, I drilled a little hole right here so that we could pull our wires through and come out on the inside. This one wire I've got here is actually my wire for my strobes that, as I mentioned, is going to come up to the. Uh, you know from the wire from our saucer from the control board for our strobe lights that go on the tail the other two wires are for the uh, lighting for the chiller grills and the bassard collector up front okay so everything in there is pretty much set up and ready to go everything worked out really good the uh, pylons fit together really nice you gotta fill in a little bit of putty along the seam here I can see there's a little gap but uh, we'll take care of that again this can all be painted we, the nice thing about doing this window scraping thing is you don't have to mask anything Literally, when I get this all closed up and puttied and everything, sanded down, we can just spray spray paint the whole thing without a care. The only thing we need to worry about is not spraying over the deflector dish. But everything else, we can totally spray it down, not worry, because we're going to come back and scrape the windows clear later on. Okay, so both sides are exactly the same. They're both ready to go. Um, I, did, I forgot to mention, in the back here, for this lighting in the back, I do have a uh, flat, you know, the flat type, uh, rectangle type white LEDs that are sitting in this little slot that I cut out, you know, pointed straight back and uh, that lights up that little group right back there. I want to really make sure that that lit up because that was something cool that I thought would be a nice little extra on that. So that'll look good. We're probably going to have a um, small little light somewhere back here. You know, we can always drill a hole and drop a fiber optic in there and get some light to pick that up later on when we finish that if we decide we want to do that. Okay, so these came out really good and um, the whole part of this uh, 
uh, flipping this this over was the key to this you guys because now we don't block any light like I said you could see if this was reversed this whole area right here would be covering up this whole group of windows right here and we don't want to lose that I thought maybe it would soak through the plastic anyway but it didn't in that case it just it just you know that group of windows wouldn't light up at all so we solved that problem so um, here's the deflector dish now what I did with this is um, we've got the nice photo etch parts that are going to go on the front of this to make this really nice and detailed but I wanted to, um, I didn't want to have to build a light box around this or anything, and I wanted a true uh, yellow LED in there. I didn't want to have the ambient light trying to light that. It just didn't look good. Um, and again, like the like the uh, uh, the other impulse engine, I wanted this to be set, lit separately look, so it looks like it's lit by itself. So I just took some modeling clay after I painted all this, and so we don't have the yellow light that's leaking inside the rest or the other lights interfering with this. I just took some modeling clay and sealed it all up. I glued a um, flat top 5 millimeter uh, yellow LED right to the back side of this lens, right in the dead center of it. And then I just used my solar res to glue that all on there. Sealed it all up and everything. And then I covered it up with this little uh, modeler's clay, which has already gotten hard and it'll stay on there forever. And it's a perfect light blocker. No light leaks out of that at all. So basically we have our, let me grab that piece really quick. We have the uh, the deflector housing here, which is nice because it goes in from the outside. So what I'll be doing with this basically is um, is uh, let's see, I want to make sure I do this right. We put this in here. It's got a little slot. It sits in like this. Okay, and then that will. Um, be able to be put in last it's already painted and everything once the saucers you know the, the secondary holes together i'll be able to put this in and i'll have extra little bit of wire hanging out i'll connect the wire and just kind of push it up in there and and glue this in place and that'll all be set and then i'll put on the photo etch detail so that's going to look really nice okay so there's that and um so that's about it you guys i mean everything's going to fit together really good you know we're just going to have to do the basic uh seam work on this They're, the seams aren't too bad they're you know, kind of looking at it, they're they're worse in some spots than there are the others. But uh, the panel on the back drops on here pretty good. The panel up here drops in really nice, so we don't have to worry about anything there. Like I said, this kind of goes um, like uh, so, like that. Okay, and then that all fits on there really nice. And you can see we'll have our deflector in there sitting nice and pretty. And the little cover here in the back, there's a little bit more detail that goes on the bottom here. But again, we're going to paint this all up after we get it all, you know, put together, finish painting it. That's why I didn't bother to paint any of these parts white yet. Little scratches happen in your black. Don't worry about it. I'll touch that all back up before I put it together, you know, after we finish it. But uh, I've got the uh, nacelles that I'm working on next. And uh, that'll be in the next video to show you how we work those out. So this is moving along really good. I've got some brand new um, Aztec decals in from Jerry at HDA Model Works that we'll show you in the next video. It's a beautiful set. And um, I've got the photo etch parts for this as well, the photo etch kit. So it's going to be really nice when we get all finished with it. So, all right, that's a wrap for this video, you guys. A little update for you there on what we've been doing. Hopefully that helps you out. A lot of you guys are, um, uh, it's good to hear that a lot of you guys are encouraged to build this now with this uh, light uh, window scraping method. It does save a whole bunch of time, and it's working out really, really well. Okay, we'll catch you in the next video, everybody. Take care, and happy modeling.